In this final kinetics video, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of exactly how things like concentration and temperature affect the rate of reaction. To do this, we're going to expand on collision theory, the theory that describes how collisions between molecules lead to reactions. In the last video, we talked about the fact that the rate of reaction actually depends on the chances of a successful collision occurring between reactant molecules. Now we're going to figure out why it is that the variables of surface area, concentration and pressure, temperature and catalysts affect those chances, and thereby affect the reaction rate. Firstly, let's look at surface area, concentration and pressure. We're going to bundle these together because they essentially work in the same way. Take our hypothetical flask of reactants and their Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Have a look at the y-axis of this graph. This is the number of particles. Keeping all else the same, if we increase the surface area, concentration or pressure of one of the reactants, we're effectively increasing the number of reactant molecules per unit volume that are available to react. So we can redraw the distribution to show that there's more of everything like this. The shape of the distribution remains the same, give or take my dodgy drawing. Uh, the proportion of particles with any particular speed doesn't change, it's just that there are more of them crowded together. Now, it's still the same reaction, so the activation energy remains in the same place. And if the activation energy is the same, then the proportion of particles over the activation energy also remains the same. But because we now have more particles in the same volume, the rate of all collisions increases, and so the rate of successful collisions must also increase. Just as an aside, we should make it explicit why increasing the surface area in a heterogeneous reaction has the same effect as increasing concentration in a homogeneous reaction. If the reactants are uniformly dispersed in a single homogeneous solution, the number of collisions per unit time depends on concentration and temperature. But if the reaction is heterogeneous, the, reaction, the reactants are in two different phases and the reactant collisions can only occur at the interface between those phases. So the number of collisions per unit time is reduced relative to the homogeneous case and so is the reaction rate. But if you increase the surface area, and you could do this by dividing one of your phases more finely, for example, like having uh, calcium carbonate powder in acid as opposed to a single large chunk of calcium carbonate in acid. Uh, if you do this, then you increase the frequency of the collisions because there's more surface area, there's more reactant molecules exposed, and hence you increase the reaction rate. Car engines use surface area effects to increase reaction rates by spraying the fuel into the engine cylinder in microscopic droplets rather than in uh, say a single liquid stream. The fuel burns more rapidly. So to sum this up, increasing surface area, concentration or pressure has the effect of increasing the number of collisions that each molecule undergoes. If the chance of a successful collision remains the same, but collisions happen more frequently, then successful collisions will also occur more frequently. And this means the reaction goes faster. To give you a really simple numerical example, imagine a situation in which molecules were undergoing 100 collisions per second with a 30% chance of being successful. That would mean that on average you would have 30 successful collisions per second. Now, if you increase the concentration so that there are 200 collisions per second, you've still got a 30% chance of being successful, but that gives you, on average, 60 successful collisions per second. So we've effectively increased the rate of reaction. OK, now let's look at temperature. As you know from basic kinetic theory, as you increase the temperature of a substance, the distribution of molecule speeds changes. This diagram shows the Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions for nitrogen molecules at 0 degrees Celsius, 1000 and 2000 degrees Celsius. And you can see that as the temperature increases, there are two things that change about the distributions. First, the average speed increases. You can see this from the fact that the peak of each distribution moves further along the x-axis, so the average speed is increasing. And the second thing is that the distribution broadens out, meaning that there's a much greater range of speeds as you go up to higher temperatures. Now imagine a reaction for which the activation energy is here. Remember that uh, each speed on this axis corresponds to a particular kinetic energy. And this means that many molecules, or rather any molecules with speeds greater than this will have a successful collision, while those slower than this will not. 
So at zero degrees C, essentially no molecules have the required energy and this reaction won't happen at all. Molecules can sit there for as long as they like and the chances that there will be a successful collision are infinitesimally small. Now, if you increase the temperature of the reaction to 1000 degrees C, you can see that the proportion of molecules with the required energy is still fairly small, but it is finite. The reaction will occur, not very fast, but it would be measurable. If you increase the temperature again to 2000 degrees C, the proportion of molecules with sufficient energy is now much higher, and this means that the chances of a successful collision is also much higher. And if there's a greater probability of successful collisions, the reaction will go faster. So this is one of the two reasons temperature affects the rate of reaction. Changing the temperature changes the proportion of molecules that have sufficient energy to overcome the activation energy. But there is another effect of temperature, and that is that increasing the average speed of the molecules means they will also have more frequent collisions overall. So increasing the temperature is really a double whammy. The overall rate of collisions increases and the proportion of successful collisions increases. So as before, a simple set of numbers to help you visualize what's going on. Imagine as before that you would initially have 100 collisions per second with a 30% chance of success, giving you on average 30 successful collisions per second. But if you increase the temperature, you might get to a situation where you had, say, 150 collisions per second, so you've uh, increased the overall rate of collisions, and you now have a 50% chance of success. So your chances of a successful, successful collision have also increased. And that would then give you an overall average rate of 75 successful collisions per second. So increasing the temperature definitely increases the rate of reaction. All right, lastly, we've got catalysts. As we mentioned before, a catalyst is a substance that makes a reaction go faster without participating in the reaction itself, or rather without being consumed by the reaction. Essentially, the catalyst that you put in at the beginning of a reaction can be recovered at the end of the reaction unchanged. Many catalysts, particularly biological ones like enzymes, are highly selective in their action and only accelerate one of a number of different reactions that could occur. An everyday example of a catalyst that you nevertheless may not be aware of is the catalytic converter in a car. This is a device that takes the products of incomplete combustion, like carbon monoxide, and speeds up their conversion to less toxic compounds like carbon dioxide. The reaction that turns carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide has a high activation energy and is usually a slow reaction, but the catalyst in the catalytic converter, usually a metal like platinum or rhodium, makes this happen much faster and therefore reduces the harmful emissions from the car. So how does it do it? Well, back to our Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. In thinking of ways to speed up a reaction, we've used surface area, concentration and pressure to increase the overall rate of collisions. And we've used temperature to both increase the overall rate of collisions and also increase the proportion of successful collisions. All of these methods involve trying to get as many molecules as possible over the activation energy. But what if we could change the activation energy, make the hurdle easier to get over? Well, this is what a catalyst does. If this is the activation energy of a normal reaction, then this would be what might happen if we added a catalyst. The distribution of particle energies remains exactly the same, but now that the activation energy has been lowered, more collisions are, su are successful. Now, what I've just said gives the impression that the activation energy can somehow be dialed down for a reaction, when in fact this is impossible. Since the activation energy has to do with bond energies, and the bond energies in a molecule are pretty much fixed, you can't actually change the activation energy of the reaction process. What a catalyst does is to provide an alternative way through, a sneaky way of completing the reaction without having to go via the pathway that involves the high activation energy. There's a nice analogy from the website chemguide.co.uk that I'll use to illustrate this. Suppose you have a mountain between two valleys, so that the only way for people to get from one valley to the other is over the mountain. Only the most active people will manage to get from one valley to the other. Now suppose a tunnel is cut through the mountain. Many more people will now manage to get from one valley to the other by this easier route. You could say that the tunnel route has a lower activation energy than going over the mountain. But you haven't lowered the mountain. The tunnel has provided an alternative route, but it hasn't lowered the original one. The original mountain is still there and some people will still choose to climb it. 
In the chemistry case, if particles collide with enough energy, they can still react in exactly the same way as if the catalyst weren't there. It's simply that the majority of particles react via the easier catalyzed route. So to summarize catalysts, adding a catalyst to a reaction provides a pathway with a lower activation energy, and the effect of this is to increase the proportion of successful collisions. Remember, the other way to increase the proportion of successful collisions is to increase the temperature, but often it's not convenient to increase the temperature of a reaction. It may be a better option to find a catalyst that allows you to perform the reaction faster at a lower temperature. Now, there's a lot of information in this video that requires a bit of digesting in order to construct a sort of intuition in your head about reaction rates. We'll be giving you these questions, among others, in class, but it'd be worth gently mulling over them in the meantime as a warm-up. Remember that you can go over this video as many times as you like, and that a really good way to use it is to note down things that you don't understand and have questions about, and then bring them to class afterwards. Alright, that's it for now. We'll see you in class.